so well before starting this video i like to say that this is going to be a series of uh, in which i'm going to show you different useful things made up of these batteries because you know these batteries are becoming very popular and many of you may seen in youtube and many other places that people use 9 volt batteries to power up their projects and even some made power bank using 9 volt batteries but unfortunately i have to say that those 9 volt batteries are just a piece of shit. they are just a piece of junk and they can only charge your phone up to max 15 to 20 percent before they die that is why this commercial battery packs come into play this is a 5000 milliamp power power bank so these power banks are pretty efficient and they can deliver decent amount of power for a longer time before they actually die so without just further ado let's get started So, I wanted to make a portable shouldering iron and you know if you go to some sort of exhibitions or something like that then you have to again search for an outlet to plug these pesky things in there and it takes hell lot of time to heat up before you can do anything. So I wanted to make a shouldering iron which will be portable, could be powered through a power bank and it should be also heating up quite well and quite fast so let's get started so first of all we have to understand how does a soldering iron works so basically you know when you pass a certain amount of voltage at a certain amount of current through a wire and then it produces a certain amount of heat because of joules heating that is i squared r times t where r is the resistance of the wire the length decides what's the current it will need to heat up and what's the amount of time it will need to heat up so let me show you a demo this is my setup as you can see i have chosen a 220 ohm resistor and connected it to my current limited supply up there it is 12 volts and it can supply up to 24 amps we will just figure out i will like to use my thermocouple for that and here is my ambient conditions you can see 30 degrees c and i am going to switch it on and see what's the amount of time it takes to heat this resistor up and we need around 350 to 400 degrees celsius to melt this shouldering wire so i will let up to 350 or 400 degrees c and we'll see whether it can reach that much amount of temperature without burning anything so let's get started i will like to use my stopwatch now you can see i will switch it on and switch on the stopwatch and see what's the amount of time it takes to heat the resistance up to 30 degrees to 300 degrees let's get started there we go so guys you can see the temperature is something around uh, 3 minutes 30, 30 seconds and 4 minutes and the temperature is around 50 uh, you can see 51 or so so it's not working though I can touch it in here oh, shit. I think the thermocouple is loose well so that doesn't work so I replaced the 220 ohm resistor with a 1 ohm resistor now let's see what happens let's power it off turning on my stopwatch 3, 2, 1, go we are experiencing technical difficulties please stand by You can see the temperature is right around 100 degrees C and my power supply is actually tripping because of short circuit protection. So 
I'm gonna change my power supply so that kind of working but actually my power supply is stripping so I am gonna use this power supply this is a adapter 12 volt adapter which has a current limitation of 1 amps so and it doesn't have any short circuit protection so hope we will get a positive result now so guys everything is ready now and you can see the temperatures again right around 30 degrees C now I will turn on the power supply on the same time I will turn on the stopwatch to see what the time it takes to reach 300 degrees C 3, 2, 1, go it's 200, 200 there we go what happened? Kind of positive results. Let's see. See, it burned. Let's try it again. I'm letting it run despite of that fucking smell. Let's see whether it can reach 300 or not. Kind of dropping. Well, let's see whether we can melt this solder with it or not. No, nothing. Not working. That for f**k's sake doesn't work at all. At least to melt the shoulder. Thankfully though, I have some 10 watt wire wound resistors. Um, now I have to open them out to get some nichrome wire, which is used in most of the heaters. So, let's do it. Here we go. I kept on unwinding the nichrome wire and after choosing a workable length of wire, see it worked finally and it is quite fast in heating also. While testing I realized that the uh, ambient conditions, I mean the ears blowing from my fan up in there, that also reduces the temperature significantly. And now as I'm gonna use with, with my power bank. I have to calibrate the heating based on 5 volts and 1 amp. Till now I was I was using a 12 volt supply but I have to reduce the power to 5 volts and we will choose 1 amps of current because as my power bank can provide 5 volts and maximum 2.1 amps at, as it was rated so uh, 1 amp will be a good current to work with and determining the length of wire required for the coil is actually pretty simple. Uh, we have to just calibrate the current to be 1 amps and I did it using my multimeter and you have to just slide the probes up in the wire to see which point it actually reaches 1 amp and that is the amount of wire you need to make the heating element of for your shouldering iron but beware of the higher temperatures because this is quite dangerous it can burn your skin very quickly be very serious while calibrating the current because see what happened with me oh sh holy piece of sh what was that see it nearly burned me uh, what happened is actually the wire melted due to high temperature. I was not serious enough to calibrate the output. I gave it much more power and it just melted and jumped into me. So that was very very scary indeed. But a note to the idiots like me, never ever try this at home unless you want to hurt yourself. Well, after changing the temperatures once again we are ready to go for the build. And in my other videos many of you just asked me to show the steps and in this video i'm going to do that i'm going to show the whole steps of making this diy okay for the tip i have chosen a two millimeter nail and for insulating the tip for putting the coil in like always i acted like an idiot and burned several materials and smoked the whole room with poisonous gases
see and finally realize that fiberglass leavings are the way to go you do not burn anything just go for fiberglass leavings because they are really good for their purpose so without wasting further time let's go to the build steps here we go Just double check the current and that is around 950 milliamps or 0.95 amps so we can now calculate how much time we will be actually able to shoulder with my power bank so it turned uh, to be around 5.2 hours that's pretty decent because who shoulders for 5.2 hours right see this is my calculation here we have milliamps and here we have hours so if we multiply that two we get the capacity in milliamp power so according to my power bank it is 5000 milliamp per hour and my shouldering area is dragging 950 milliamps so we will get the hour using this equation and we have got 5.26 hours roughly so that's pretty decent so 
If you really liked it, give it a thumbs up, thumbs down for the opposite and do share, subscribe and hit the notification bell icon to get notified about my latest uploads. It would be awesome if you support me on Patreon. Uh, so that's all for today. Hope you have enjoyed. This is Malhar, you are watching Out of Syllabus and I am signing off.